in, still in our series called Planted, and we've been working on, for the month of August, we were working on things that were planted in our hearts, you know, because Jesus compares our hearts or the human soul, he compares it to a garden, and things grow there. And last month we were talking about the things that grew there that we don't necessarily want to grow. And all of us who have planted a garden or had a flower bed know that there are fates worse than death, and one of them is pulling weeds. Right? And if you haven't gotten there, maybe you're not old enough to be there, but someday you'll be like, this is terrible. I never want to do this <laughs> again. But this month we're going to be talking about things like things that we do want to grow and how to help them grow. Because um, here's what I know, and I learned this truth. I learned it. Uh, I always knew it, but my wife pointed it out to me in a way that was amazing. So when I grew up, I either grew up in the city or the country. So in the city or way out in the country. So I either had, you know, you know, I was in the city of Detroit or this small little town way out in the country that had one stoplight. And we lived five miles even outside of that town in a, in a, in a little town called Vanderbilt in northern Michigan. And um, in both of those places, it had something in common. And, and that thing was nobody cared about your lawn. Anybody live in a place where nobody cares about your lawn? If it, if it's too long or if, you know, but, but I like living kind of in a town. And when Melissa and I bought a house, we, we had, um, we had a, a nice lawn and she worked really hard to water it and make sure that it had water. But one day somebody, I can't even remember what it was they had to dig some stuff up for, but there was this huge piece of grass that was missing after they dug it. Cause you know, they don't plan anything new. They just kind of dig it cause they can and they put it back. And I'm like, uh, and she says, are you going to plant grass there? And I'm like, do I need to? And she said this profound thing. Something is going to grow there. <laughs> Something is going to grow there. You see, you, you can sit back and be lazy and not do anything if you want to, but something is going to grow there. And that, that's kind of the way it is with the human heart, the human soul. Something's going to grow there. We may not want those things to grow there. We may not want uh, hurts. We may not want um, unforgiveness. We may not want anger. We may not want... Um, um, whatever sin you might want to put in. So, but, but, it, but if you're not planning the good things, you're not going to realize that something is going to grow there in your heart. As a matter of fact, Jesus, when he was talking about this, this is the scripture that launched this service. Then Jesus said to his disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. It's impossible, but that offense is will come. So the anger, the sin, the hurt, the pain, all those things that want to come into our life and kind of uh, keep us from realizing the goodness and the greatness of God, those are going to come. There, there's no way to avoid them. It's kind of like that patch of grass or what used to be grass after they dug it up. I, I could have chose to do nothing about it. I don't have to do anything. That Something's going to grow there automatic. Amen? So it doesn't take any effort for the weeds to grow, right? They, they grow without... I, I don't know many people who have said, I think I'm going to go out and plant some dandelions today. Although when I was a kid, <laughs> who's ever planted some dandelions and made a wish... <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever wished that that kid wouldn't have planted those dandelions in your yard? <laughs> ah, there you go. Making jelly. There you go. So you might do it on purpose if you're making dandelion jelly. Dandelion smoothie? Okay. I, I've seen the leaves in, I've seen the leaves in salad before and I've wondered to myself, why are they putting weeds in my salad? <laughs> <laughs> It was a McDonald's salad, so I'm not sure if it was that healthy. <laughs> Is anything healthy from McDonald's? <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm going to move on. So that word offenses is the Greek word scandalon. If you don't know any Greek words, this is one that you should know if you've been hanging out with us. This word scandalon, offenses, sometimes it's, it's uh, translated as the word sin, but what it literally means is it's the movable stick or the trap stick. It's a trap, a snare. And oftentimes when we get offended and we're carrying these offenses, we're looking to get a hold of the person who offended us, but we don't realize that the person that we're going to trap when we think we're getting them is ourselves. So oftentimes, I, I, so I don't go on Facebook very often. But when I do, it's like I always find a, a lot of nuggets out there because there are a lot of good godly people who are posting really good stuff. And one of my favorite people to check out is one of my favorite artists, singers, he raps a lot of the time, so maybe you wouldn't call him a singer, but his name is Toby Mack. And he had this post up, and it just, it meant a lot to me when I was thinking about this series and what God was trying to say to us through this series. If you focus, if you focus on the hurt, you will continue to suffer. If you focus on the lesson, you will continue to grow. Okay, so last month we worked on getting those hurts, getting those hang-ups, going back to the thing that's the root of the problem and figuring out, God, how can we get out of this so I can get out of this pain, so that I can overcome this anxiety, so that I can overcome this depression, so I can overcome all these things, all these fears that are holding me back. And the very next thing I see in Diane Halzerman, who goes to church here sometimes, and I'm friends with her on Facebook, is this line. And it's like, these guys are like, they're writing my message for me. It's great when somebody else does your work for you. It's really cool. But she, she has this post up there. It says, if you don't fill your mind with the Word of God, the enemy will fill it with fear, anxiety, stress, worry, and temptation. If that isn't true, if that isn't true, hmm. and if I were to say this kind of like the John way to say it, I I would say it more like this. If we fail to tend to the things that we want to grow, the things we do not want to grow will grow instead. Right? So if if we don't attend to the things that we want to grow, the things that we do not want to grow will grow instead. Um, somebody said it to me like this, that, that, that life is like going up on an escalator that's going down. If you want to climb, it's going to be hard. But if you want to fall, all you got to do is stand still. Right? Right? So the question becomes, what do we want to grow? What do you want to grow in your life? What is that thing that in your prayer life, you're like, God, I want to grow. Uh, Why do I want to grow? What do I want to grow? What what is the point of all this thought about growing? Is it necessary that that we grow? And if we grow, what are we growing up into? Well, I guess some of us just need to grow up. Okay, Lord. If you're not laughing, it's probably you. (laughs) <laughs> most of us need to grow up. So as I was thinking about, God, what do we want to grow? What, what is it that we really need to grow? At? And I could find no greater truth in the entire Bible than this Scripture. Let's read the whole thing out loud. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, Growing in the knowledge of God. (laughs) First of all, I want to say to all of my English teachers who complained about me writing a run-on sentence that I don't have nothing on the Apostle Paul because you notice there's no period. (laughs) The second thing I want to say is there, there was so much meat in this verse that I had to break it up. And let's read the yellow part out loud first. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. Do you understand the depth of that? The song we just sang, Crucified, and laid behind a stone, you lived 
to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of who? Thought of me. Thought of me. Thought of me. Thought of me, the one who was going to turn his back and he knew it. Thought of me, the one who was going to claim to love him and still do that. Thought of me, the one who constantly has to fight to keep his mind focused on the Lord. Thought of me. Thought of me. The one who totally didn't deserve it. Above all, to live a life worthy of the Lord. I must read the blue. And please Him in every way. Please Him in every way. Every thought, every word, every deed, every action, every intention to please Him in every way. That's a noble calling, is it not? We all fall short of it, I, I, I think. I, I don't think I'm the only one. And then, let's read the purple. Bearing fruit in every good work. Bearing fruit. So if you're growing, you're going to bear fruit. And if you're growing in the Lord, you're going to bear good fruit. And if you're growing in the world, sin, flesh, devil, whatever you want to call it, you're going to grow in bad fruit. But we're all producing something. But we want to bear fruit in every good work. Growing in the knowledge of God. Let's say that out loud. Growing in the knowledge of God. If you dig into the, the, the meaning and the depth of what this means, this is more than knowing about God. You guys know a lot of people who know a lot about God. But you know, when I read the Bible, it's more important to know God than it is to know about God. To know God than to know about God. Because if you know about God, you know what you have? Religion. You can be the most religious person in the world. The Pharisees were the most religious people in the world. And they're the ones who were responsible for crucifying Jesus. They knew about God. But they didn't know God. Why is it so important that we know God? Jesus said in the Gospels, He said, he said many, is, many are going to come to me in that day, saying the last day, and say, Lord, didn't I do this in your name? And Lord, didn't I do that in your name? And Lord, didn't I... And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. It's about relationship. It's about growing in your relationship with the Lord. And so over the next several weeks, when we're talking about being planted and how God plants, and we're talking about what we want to grow, what do we want to grow? We're going to talk about how to cause this godly fruit to happen. And it doesn't happen because we're trying to produce godly fruit. It comes out of our relationship with the Lord. It's not, the, the tree doesn't try to bear fruit. The tree is connected to the soil that is good and the fruit happens because that's what naturally happens with things that are growing. We're, we're going to deal with how do we grow. So what do we want to grow? Our relationship with God. If you're here, I pray that that is your prayer today. I pray the, the whole reason that you would get out of, get up on a Sunday morning and get out of your car and walk in these doors is that you want to grow in your relationship with God. Somebody say, Amen. There's no other good reason to be here than that you want to grow in your relationship with God. I mean, if you're here just because I'm here because some friends go here, They'll let you down. 
If you're here because you like the music or you like the preacher, we'll let you down. If you're here because for any other reason than to grow with your relationship with God, you're kind of missing the boat. So how do we grow in our relationship with God? You see, we, we, we think it comes all to, uh, down to all these things that we do. You know, do, 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 instead of know the Lord. But Jesus, when He was comparing our hearts to a garden, He saw it a lot different than the way we see it. When He was comparing our hearts to a garden, He said, more than the works that you do, it's really about the condition of your heart. He said it like this. The farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell rocky places where it didn't have more soil. It sprung up quickly, and the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and it withered, and they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. Well, it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times while we're sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. Will anyone hear the message about the kingdom and does not understand it? The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed that was sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and wants to receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only for a short time. When troubles or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among thorns refers to someone who hears the word but the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the word, making it unfruitful. For the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times while we're sown. So what's the condition of your heart? Something's going to grow there. The Lord is trying to sow the seed of His Word into our hearts. The Lord wants us to grow in Him. He wants us to know Him. He wants us to not worship a God that's far away. That's why He became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, even the glory of the only begotten of the Father. He wants to know us intimately, but things are coming between us and Him in our relationship. And is the soil of our heart conducive to growth? Because weeds, they'll grow in just about anything. I've been out on sand dunes and weeds grow there. Weeds will grow in almost any soil, but but a good seed, that seed of the Lord, He's looking to prepare the hearts, our hearts, to grow good seed that will produce good fruit that, that results in a knowledge of Him. So that when anyone tries to tell you there's no God, you take it with a grain of salt because you know Him personally. You might as well tell me that my mother doesn't exist 
or my wife doesn't exist. You can't tell me that because I know them experientially. And I know Jesus experientially. No one can tell me there's no God because He's been with me through the fire. He's been with me through the toughest times of my life. He's been with me. But what is the condition of your heart? Is your heart like that hard soil that that the seed never is able to penetrate? You know, (laughs) funny thing I've discovered in life is that, you know, our heart can be ready for one seed from the Lord. Like, like some things from God, like you're, you're ready to hear that. You're ready to hear that, you know, He blesses those who curse you. You're ready to hear that the favor of God follows you everywhere you go. You're, you're, you're ready to hear that so it's easy to receive that seed. And there's other seed that, that is hard to receive. You know, those seed that might say that I need to change something, that the Lord is actually trying to transform the way I think, the way I, the way I live, those ones aren't as easy to receive. But something's going to grow there. Something's, something's going to grow in your seed. And there are many of you who have this, the Word of God has been planted so deeply within you Maybe you've grown up in the church and you've grown up in the Word and you're a mature Christian. And um, did you know that a garden that is healthy, you can actually go a year without planting anything and it'll still produce fruit? Did you know that? Did did you know that there's a possibility that we could let our relationship with the Lord wane for a year or for a season and we would still be producing godly fruit and think everything's okay but not realizing that we need to till the ground of our heart, that we need to get things back right with Him again. But because we're still eating this fruit that is good, we think everything's okay. But how many seasons go by and it's still like that? I told you I was around Facebook. I was there for like five minutes and I swear the Lord was writing my message. Because Kelly Soche, she was the one, she gave me three piano lessons. I won't say she taught me how to play the piano. No, she might have been four. Um, she definitely wouldn't want to take credit for teaching me because I play everything wrong. Just ask Debbie. <laughs> I play everything in the key of C and I use a transpose button <laughs> when I remember. <laughs> and if I forget, it goes really wrong. Um, but, but Kelly, she, she had this post on Facebook. She said, we did not plan a garden this year. Just didn't get, get to it with graduations and trips, etc. To my surprise, I was just looking around my weeds growing wildly out there and realized that several of my tra- tomato plants regrew this year. And there's tomatoes coming in everywhere. So we can praise God. So praise, let's praise the Lord for those times that... Uh, hallelujah. How about that verse that you haven't read in 10 years and you're talking to a friend and that very verse pops into your mind and you didn't know where it came from because you didn't read it this week? How about that biblical principle that somebody taught you when you were a new disciple in Christ? Maybe you something you even learned in Sunday school and God brings it back to your mind at just the right moment. You hadn't thought about it since then, but it was exactly what someone needed right in that moment of time. Anybody ever been there? I love how God can just surprise us with something that we didn't know was growing still inside of us. But that was because a good seed got planted in good soil. And even through time, even when we neglected it, it still grew and grew good seed because at the time it was planted, His Word will never return to Him void. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want to do that on purpose, but I love that when God does it. I don't want to neglect the Word on purpose and live on yesterday's manna. The children of Israel, they, they, God fed them with this stuff called manna. The word manna means 
what is it? There was some stuff on the ground that was kind of like a meal and they would have to make bread out of it. But God fed the children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness with this manna. But the thing about manna was you can't live on yesterday's manna. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am that manna that came down from heaven. And, and so the manna, when they would try to keep, you know, because you don't want to gather extra today so that tomorrow I can be lazy. It didn't work that way. It went spoiled the very next day, except for on the Sabbath day, because they could gather for two for the Sabbath day. Different message. Don't know why the Lord brought me there. We don't want to try to live on yesterday's mana. But it's great when God brings those things up. But as I, as I think about this, so what do I want to grow? I want my relationship with God to grow. How do we get our relationship with God to grow? And, and this week we're going to deal with step one. Step one, let's read this out loud. This is uh, Romans 12.1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper Worship. This is your true and proper worship. So, if I go back to that question, is the soil of your heart conducive to growth? I've got a barometer, uh, a, a, a litmus test, a, 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 something that can tell you what the condition of your heart is. Wouldn't you like to know what is the soil of my heart like? There, there's this scripture pulls out one of the things that we can tell what the condition of our heart is. You want to know what the condition of your heart is? I'll tell you, tell me about your worship. Tell me about your worship. Tell me about your worship. I look through the pages of the Bible. You look in the book of Revelation. You find all these different churches. And Jesus will say all these good things about them. And He'll say, but one thing I have against you. You have forgotten your first love. See, they, they had a look of righteousness. They had a, a look of religion, but they just weren't really in love with Jesus anymore. So if you want to know if, if the soil of your heart is good, tell me about your worship. And maybe you're thinking, John, I just don't like to sing you know, God, I know God gifted you with this ability, this desire, this heart to sing, but that's just not how He wired me. And, and I want to point you back to that Scripture because when I look at that Scripture, I don't see anything about singing. I see a different word. Worship equals sacrifice. Because I'll tell you, when I came to the Lord, I've always liked to sing, but not everybody always liked to hear me sing. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Can I get an amen? As a matter of fact, I remember my brother used to turn the radio off on me in the middle of a song just so that I could hear for myself how badly I sounded. <laughs> I'll just say, don't try to sing with Steve Perry from Journey. It's not a good idea. <laughs> you probably can't hit those notes. <laughs> but worship equals sacrifice. Worship, wor the Bible does say worship is singing. The Bible says in Psalms over and over again, come to the Lord with worship, enter His gates with thanksgiving. It says, sing a new song unto the Lord. Clap, you, clap your hands, you children of the Lord. Enter His courts with praise. Yes, singing is a part of it, but, but worship is so much deeper. I think about Abraham when he had his son Isaac. His son Isaac was a boy. He was able to, to carry, he was able to carry the wood. And he says, God, says, Dad, where are we going? He's got this wood on his back and they're, they're on their way up a mountain. And he says, we're going to go and worship the Lord. And worship was known to be this thing called sacrifice. 
And while they're on their way up, Abraham's thinking to himself, well, God told me to go sacrifice my son. So I'm going up on this mountain to sacrifice my son. And when his son said to him, Dad, I see the wood, but where's the sacrifice? Where is the, where is the animal that we're going to worship with? And Abraham didn't have the heart to say, you are the sacrifice, my son. So he simply said these words of faith. Son, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. How is your worship? Are you still in love with Jesus? Do you still have a passion to know Him more intimately? Do you still hunger for His Word? Jesus said in the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Are you still hungering and thirsting for righteousness? Or are you being filled up with something else? I'm going to say it again. Are you still hungering and thirsting for righteousness? Or are you being filled with something else? Sin? Self? 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 Worship is step one in growing our relationship with God. I've been to churches who use like the music time at the beginning of church. Has anyone ever been to a church that like doesn't do music time at the beginning? I've never been to a church that doesn't do music time at the beginning. What I, what I was taught was that the reason they did the music time in the beginning was so that they could stall for all the people who arrive late to church so that they don't miss the message. (laughs) No, it's not for that. It's because worship is step one in growing our relationship with God. What if the, the soil of our heart needs to be prepared to receive the seed of the Word? What if we needed to come before God and say, God, You are good in the midst of all that is bad in our lives. What if we had to get past the point of grumbling so we could get to the point of growing? And what if a song was the one way that we can get there? Maybe that's a reason to make sure you're in church. Maybe that's a reason to make sure that you engage passionately with worship because it's not about whether um, it's the song you want to hear. It's the song your heart needs to be prepared to receive the seed of the Word that you might grow thereby. Romans 12, 1, I urge you, my brothers, we're going to read it again. And sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So if you don't like to sing, you have a wonderful opportunity to offer your body, your voice, your heart, your passion and your love as a living sacrifice. There have been many times in my life and I'd love to tell you that I don't get there often that I'm just like, Lord, you could come and get me right now. Because it would be good to be able to like, you know, say that final prayer that God forgive me of this sin and that sin and anything that would keep me out of heaven and just end this because a dead sacrifice doesn't sin anymore. Right? A dead sacrifice doesn't struggle anymore. A dead sacrifice doesn't hurt anymore. But the Lord is calling us to be a living sacrifice. To worship in spite of some of the things that are going on in our lives. To worship in spite of pain. To worship in in spite of hurt. To worship in spite of... And that is holy and pleasing to God. And this is your true and proper worship. And we're going to Jump into verse 2 next week. But verse 2 is very key, and that will be the next step. So worship is step 1. Step 2 is I'm going to give you a preview. Let's read it out loud together. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And if the soil of your heart is too hard, stony, or full of the cares of this life to worship, we will not grow. If you're wondering, if I was asking, do you love Him like you used to? And your honest answer is, no. Do you love Him like you used to? I don't love you like I used to. Cause I'm too busy loving me. And I don't spend the time with you that I need to. And wonder why it is my soul can't find you. But I'm ready to learn how to faithfully love you. With my heart, my soul, my mind. Take me back, take me back to the time I fell in love. Are you, is that your prayer? Lord, take me back to the time I fell in love with you. Or is your heart too hard, stony, and full of the cares of this life to worship? I'm going to ask the worship team to come up as I pray. Heavenly Father, I come before You in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that You would help us return to our first love. That You would help us to worship You again. That You would help us to love You more than anything in this life, God. That nothing would be above You, that nothing would take the place of You. Pray that we would learn again to worship. I ask, we offer the, the soil of our heart to You, Lord. And we ask You to point out the, the, the places in our heart that are hard or stony or full of the cares of this life, Lord. We ask You, Lord, that can You once again plow the soil, that You could overturn it. Because we want to grow in our relationship with You. We want to love You more today than we ever have before. But it's gotten so hard with our focus on a lot of other things, Lord. Return our hearts to You. Return our focus to You. Return our worship to You, God. May it be You and You alone who we focus on, who we depend on, who our eyes are on. In Your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen.